In the beginning of this week's Parsha, Yaakov has his famous dream of the angels climbing up and down the ladder. The verse that describes the scene when he lay down says, V'yifga b'makom v'yalin sham, he found the place, he lay down there, Kiva ha-shemesh, when the night had set, when the sun had gone down, v'yikach me'avne ha-makom, he took from the stones of that area, v'yasem me'ra shotav, and he arranged it around his head, v'yishkav b'makom ahu, and then he laid down in that place. When he wakes up from that dream, that collection of stones is spoken about in the singular, the stone around his head. What happened to those stones? How did they merge into one? So the Gemara in Chulin 91b tells us that a miracle happened. And because each one of these stones wanted the right for this righteous Yaakov to lay down on that stone, they sort of were about to fight over it, and a miracle occurred where they merged into one stone. Well, why would that happen? The Ben Ishchai's commentary on another Gemara in Sanhedrin 95a tells us that when a person, when a righteous person uses an object and does a mitzvah with it, some of the holiness that happens from the mitzvah is absorbed into the object. And not just for a rabbi or a holy person like Yaakov, but for anybody. And the object wants that holiness. Obviously, a non-organic object has no wants and feelings, but there's a need in nature to be imbued with holiness. Rav Chaim Kanievsky tells a story that he heard from his father, disciple Gon. In a little town called Rohichin lived a famous tzaddik, famous righteous person by the name of Eliyahu Mordechai Livonowitz. And he was just a, a blacksmith. But people would come to him from miles around for him to do miracles. There's stories told about him that somebody once brought a paralyzed child to him. And this righteous person took his tzitzit fringes and touched the boy's legs with them, and the boy could move. Miracles could happen with these objects because a certain kind of holiness is imbued into them. It's our job to do that in the world, to imbue holiness into regular things. We can imbue holiness into our week by making our Shabbat something special, by taking ownership of the spiritual potential within our own actions. We are then imbuing that holiness into the objects we own and into the objects around us that we use for the mitzvot and for the good deeds that we do. Shabbat carries with it its own mitzvot that imbue us with holiness. And the things we use, the physical objects we use in the performance of that mitzvah, imbue those objects with holiness too. And that allows us to make a Shabbat imbue holiness into the coming week. And then we're increasing the holiness of the world. What a great thing to think about as we go into Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom.